if you want to have one of those defenses that's just absolutely dominant, that shuts down any offensive attack no matter what they see, the fact is it's going to come down a lot more to whether or not your defense can defeat blocks and make tackles, the fundamentals, than it is your scheme. What we're going to talk about today is developing a gap sound defensive scheme. And when I say that your fundamentals are going to matter way more than the scheme, that assumes that you have a sound defensive scheme, both in front being gap sound and in coverage. Every defense has its weaknesses, every every coverage has its weaknesses, but ultimately, even though you may not be in the optimal perfect spot every single play, if you're running a sound defensive scheme, no matter what it is, 3-4, 3-3-5, 4-2, 4 you know, whatever you call them, 4-3, 5-3, it doesn't matter. If you've got a sound seven man, eight man front, then you're gonna be in a position to make plays as long as your guys defeat blocks and make tackles. What we're gonna talk about today is making sure that your defense is actually gap sound. And I'm gonna talk about three different rules that you need to follow in order to check that, to make sure that your defense is in fact gap sound against whatever offensive scheme that you are seeing. But first I wanna talk about what it means to be a gap sound defense. So when guys hear this, a lot of times it's just, well, do you fill up all the gaps? And ultimately, that is kind of what we're talking about is do you have a player accountable for every gap or potential gap that the offense is going to create? We're going to talk about three different ways to get there, but what we're saying is that no matter what the offense runs in a gap sound defense, it's just not that I have a guy assigned for A gap, B gap, C gap. No matter what you run, I have somebody who's assigned to a gap, uh, not necessarily assigned to a gap. I think coaches go way overboard in assigning, particularly linebackers, to a gap, saying you're a B gap, fill linebacker. It's like, well, what if A gap's so? You better get in there. Like, you're a linebacker, you fill open doors or open windows or whatever you want to call them. You don't just run to a spot. I don't teach linebackers that way. I don't believe in teaching linebackers that way. And I very rarely talk to linebackers about what gap you have unless we're talking about blitzing in which case they got to know where uh which area they're going to be blitzing to when we're talking about defensive linemen defensive linemen are going to be responsible for a gap or an area and it's really going to be based on their alignment or their movement their slant at the start of the snap or their read and the same thing with linebackers where they're going to fit is going to be based partly on their alignment but also big time on their reads and keys being gap sound combines not only having defenders assigned to gaps but also in having your defenders get to where they need to be based on the reads that they use, whether it's linebackers, safeties, or defensive linemen. This is how you account for uh, all of the different things the offense does post-snap. Let's get to the three ways that you can check to see if your defense is gap sound. The first thing they wanna check on is your defense needs to be balanced in the count with the offense. And this is how we account for different formations. No matter what defense you're using, and I teach the 4-2-5, the 4-3, the 3-3-5, the 3-4 defense, we have all four of those systems included in a JDFB Insider membership at joedanielfootball.com. They're all based on the same principles that we are going to be able to adjust to any formation. We're gonna be able to be gap sound against any formation, any, uh, any offensive scheme that we see. This is a 4-2-5 defense lined up uh, against just a, a straight I formation, not a big deal. What I want to talk about here is counting the formation and making sure that we are either even or we may be slightly uneven in the count, and that's okay. We're really only going to count the box, but we can get our free safety involved. So what we do here um, is we count based on this is one man, two, and three. Now we could count this and say he's four, but really we're just going to have our corners uh, for, for the simplicity, we're going to say our corners and our receivers are going to kind of cancel out or our outside receivers are going to kind of cancel out here. And then we're going to count, since these guys are in an I, the center is a half, and we'll just draw a line right down the middle here. So the center is a half, the quarterback is a half, the H is a half, and the R is a half. So we've got one, two, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five guys over on this side for the offense. On the weak side, we've got one, two, and then our two and a half, three, three and a half, four over here. And then our one and one, that's 11 guys. So we've got our all 11 here. So five over here and four over here. When we look at our count defensively. We say that we have one, two, three, four. We have our free safety shaded over this way because of the tight end. So if we want to count them as a four and a half, or we could count them as a five, we're pretty balanced here, okay? The free safety is going to give us that extra defender that we need to have over here. On the other side, we've got our one, 
two, three, four. We've got what we need. Now, you don't always want to be balanced because if you know a team runs heavily to the strong side, you would want to overload to that side. Or if you know that they've got a great player to one side, you would want to overload to that side. So you don't always have to be balanced. So here we're looking at a 33 stack defense. And again, I just want to show you the count with an odd front. It's just like we did with the offense here. These The nose and the mic, since they're head up on the center, count as a half to each side. So we've got one, two, three. Again, our free safety is more shaded to the strong side. We could count them as a half to either side, or we could count them uh, for our purposes here as being to the strong side with the tight end over there. We balance them up against a balanced formation. And then we've got half for the mic and half for the nose. So that gives us four and a half, five. So we've got five over here. One, two, three, three and a half, four, till there, four. So that's how we use counting to make sure that we're balanced there. Now, the second thing that we're going to look at is we know that we've got our count sound. Are we sound as far as gap? And this doesn't mean that we necessarily have a single player assigned to a single gap or he's blitzing a gap every play. Based on our initial alignment and, and knowing where our guys are going to be going, do we have somebody responsible for each gap? And if we don't, then we have an unsound defense. So let's take a look here at a 4-3 defense uh, playing against, a in this case, a two-tight end formation. A little bit tougher uh, for what we're doing because of the fact that there's an extra gap. We know that our D-tackle... Strong tackle is going to be in a three technique, so he's responsible for the B gap. We've got that one covered. Our nose is in a two I because we've got a heavy check out here, something we teach in our 4-3 defense system at JoeDanielFootball.com, so he's responsible for that A gap. A gap is covered. We've got the defensive end on the outside. He's going to be striking the outside half. He's in a nine technique. He's responsible for that D gap out here or that alley area. And then we've got our, tight, or our defensive end on the weak side, responsible for this C gap. From there, let's say that we have a strong side run uh, because with the 4-3, we have a two-gapped Mike Linebacker. What he's responsible for will depend on the read that he gets. So our Mike Linebacker, if we get a strong run read, he's going to be responsible for strong A gap. Our Sam Linebacker is responsible for strong C gap. Our Will Linebacker is responsible for cutback B gap. Uh, in other defenses, I will have him take off running and make the weak safety responsible for weak side B gap. Just depends on how you want to play that. Our weak safety, though, is responsible in this case for counter reverse bootleg. So he's kind of our D gap uh, backside guy. Our strong safety is the force. They're umbrella guys. If you want to know about the umbrella, um, something that we teach in our defensive systems, they're umbrella guys. And so it's a little bit different for them. They don't really have a gap. They're kind of outside of that box. They're the force guys. Um, but you have to have force guys. But what you see here is we are gap sound. Let's look at one more with our 33 stack that we looked at before. Now, this is obviously going to depend on our pre-snap slant. So let's just make it simple. And let's give ourselves a strong slant with a weak side blitzer. And he wouldn't blitz that wide. He'd be tight to the tight to the gap. But the first thing that this does, it tells us the nose is strong side A. The end is strong side C. The backside end or the left end is weak side B. And the will backer blitzing into the C gap, he's responsible for C gap. The weak safety and the strong safety are the force. The Sam backer, who's going to take whichever gap the defensive end in front of him doesn't take, he's technically responsible for, he's, he's in the area. And again, I don't teach, hey, you're B gap. I teach, read the play, fill the open door. It's going to be B gap. The mic, where the play to cut back, would be responsible for that A gap. Our free safety, we mentioned that the 4-3 is two gap somebody's going to be two gap most of the time. Um, the free safety is responsible for the alley. In this case, with flow going uh, to the right, he would probably end up being responsible for the alley to the D gap, strong D gap side. If it was his own read situation, um, we may do something different with him where he'd be play, playing for the quarterback the other side, but all depends on game plan and what he needs to do. Uh, but he's going to be running the alley on this play. And so, again, we have somebody in all of the gaps. Finally, we need to take a look at one more thing. We've talked about our count. We've talked about filling up all the gaps. The last thing that we need to make sure that we've got covered is once the play starts, are our guys going to be headed in the right direction? Now, it's important here to understand that I think that reads and keys are only to get, especially our linebackers and our safeties uh, and our defensive linemen, going in the right direction on the first two to three steps. At some point, instinctive football 
has to take over. You've got to find the ball. That's one of the reasons I talk about even when we teach guard reads as our primary linebacker key, and I do teach both. It depends on the coverage behind us. It depends on the players. Sometimes I'll have one player key in guards, one player key in backs. Even if we're going to key the guards as the primary key, at some point that guy has to pick up the backfield, right? So the guard read would only get us going in the right direction a couple of steps, two or three steps, and then he's got to find the backfield. I tend to do drills that teach both guard reads and backfield reads, the same drills that I would use if we were just keying backfield. Um, and even when we're just keying backfield, we still need to see guard pullers. So there's really, you know, we got to see basically both in that situation. We key quarterback with our safeties uh, to try to get us going in the right direction on run pass key. This is the thing that's going to handle when you get leads, when you get pullers, when you get play actions, when you get anything where the offense is trying to uh, gain an advantage by adding an extra player, by adding a bonus player, or by taking advantage of players who have dual responsibility, particularly linebackers and overhang safeties. What we're going to do here is I'm just going to draw up one simple play. Uh, I'm going to do it against our 4-2-5 defense and show you a power and how our reads get us to that position. You're going to have to look at your reads and keys or study what we teach in Joe Daniel Football Insiders uh, in all of our defensive systems to figure out exactly how to put together those sound schemes for your defense. Here's our 4-2-5 defense lined up against what is a really tough formation, um, an 11 personnel uh, type of formation here where we've got one back, one tight end. We've got the split receivers, the twin set to the left. We've got the pro set to the right. This is a tough set to look at. Probably one of the toughest formations, I think, as far as base alignment goes, just because it's going to split you up a little bit. Our count. Tight end is one, two, three, three and a half for the center, four for the quarterback, four and a half for the R. Again, with our line down the middle. On defense, we've got one, two, three, four, and the free safety balanced up because we've got the two number two receivers to both sides, so four and a half. Same thing on the other side. We've got one, two, two and a half, three and a half. To the weak side, we're going to let our weak safety split out here, cancel out. We've got one, two, three and a half with the free safety. Count-wise, we're balanced up. Next, let's take a look at our gaps. Okay, our nose, our weak side, our nose has A gap. Our defensive end is lined up in the C gap, so our will is responsible for the weak side B gap. This is a 4-2. We're not two gapped in the front. We're two gapped in the back end with the free safety running both alleys. Weak safety, strong safety are the force. Strong side, we've got the tackle in uh, B gap. We've got the defensive end responsible for C gap. We've got the Mike linebacker responsible for A gap. Force and the free safety running both alleys. So gap-wise, sound. So we're just going to do a one-gap power, a one-back power here, something kind of simple. Um, we're going to do it to the weak side where we'd see an ISO. So we're going to get a block out on the defensive end. We're going to get a block down on the nose. We're going to get a block down or block back on the tackle. We're going to get the puller coming to handle our will linebacker. Okay. And then we're going to get something on the backside, some kind of a hinge. Because of the design of this, they're adding an extra gap by bringing an extra blocker over here. And so what we've got now, our A gap, we've got our B gap and our C to the outside, but we've also got this extra gap in here. Okay, so that's our extra gap. How do we deal with that? The way that we deal with that is our will backer. We always use the rule that the will backer fits inside. And we're going to use the body of that guard to help fill up this space. It shouldn't be a big space. But we're also going to have the mic keying on the guard. And this is our keys and reads. When the mic sees that puller, he's firing now for the first open window. And we're going to get the mic scraping over there in a hurry to add and match the extra gap that they've created. So that's the way that your reads and keys are going to account for if they add extra players, whether it's an ISO, whether it's a puller. Um, your reads and keys are the final piece to making sure that your defense is sound against whatever the offense can throw at you. If you've got all these things in place, if your alignment to formations is sound, if your gap sound as far as everybody, uh, every gap is going to be covered on the play. And then if you've got a set of reads and keys that are going to get your players in position where even if they add an extra gap, you're still able to defend it. Then you've got a gap sound defensive front. You'll be able to defend absolutely anything that's thrown at you. If you want to learn more about putting together a gap sound defense, head over to Joe Daniel Foot Football.com. I've also got a three video series on the 425 defense that you can check out and get instant access to. Go to 425defense.com slash YouTube. That link is down in the description to get a uh, instant access to a three video series that I put together at no cost to you. It's on the foundations 
of the 425 defense. I'll go into things like the umbrella principle, the uh, adjustments to formations, the reads and keys so that you can defend. Uh, we actually go into defending both a spread and a wing tee in that video series. Check it out. The link is in the description down below or go to 425defense.com slash YouTube for that. And if you want to see some of my other videos, here's links to a couple of other videos and also a reminder that if this is your first time visiting the channel, be sure to click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss any future videos that are coming out on the Joe Daniel Football channel.